Hello, everybody. Um, I, I was trying to think of a different way to start there because I always started, all right, we are recording, and I didn't want to do that this time. Uh, so welcome, everybody who is joining us here today. Uh, as you join, please let us know in the chat where you're joining us from. I'm always interested to know where folks around the world are joining these sessions. While you're doing that, I'll, I'll introduce myself. My name is Jonathan. Uh, I live in Cape Town in South Africa. I am a developer educator at Automatic, and I am sponsored to work with the training team. Uh, and the training team are the folks that uh, monitor, manage, uh, curate, and update everything at learn.wordpress.org. It's the sort of official WordPress uh, learning resource. Uh, and some of you may have come across this, this online workshop through, through Learn WordPress. So we have, and I apologize if I pronounce anybody's names incorrectly, but we have Lasse from Copenhagen in Denmark. Welcome. Uh, we have Jean from New Jersey. Uh, we have James from Boston. Arthur from Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, James, Boston, Massachusetts, the States, not Boston, anywhere else. <laughs> um, Jean, I was in your town not so long ago uh, when I flew, or your, your, not your town, but your state, I think is the right word. When I flew back from, from the US, my, my uh, trip to Cape Town was from New York Airport. So I wasn't in the town. I guess I was just in the airport for a couple of hours, but at least I know where that is more or less. Uh, we've got Sabam from India. Welcome. Mark from Issaquah, Washington. Welcome. Um, great to see everybody. I am going to mention this up front uh, for those of you who might not know. I did injure my back yesterday. It's one of the reasons why I had to move um, the workshop from yesterday. And I'm currently on muscle relaxants. And they have definitely had an effect on my ability to do things normally. Um, so you're probably finding my, my camera's freezing now. I'm just adjusting something that I should have adjusted earlier. So it does mean that my brain is not fully working the way it should. Um, and so I apologize if I fumble today more than normal. <laughs> um, as it is before this session started, I opened the wrong Zoom window, the wrong Zoom meeting. And I only realized two minutes before we got started. So I would just like to apologize for that in advance. Uh, hey, Adrian from California, listening and picking tomatoes. Awesome. Um, Cynthia. Hi, Cynthia from Ontario. And Jean says there are a lot of people in New Jersey. Airport does not give us justice. I'm sure there are some pretty spots here. Uh, yes, it would have been interesting to, to go around and see things, but it was one of those fly in, hang around for a couple of hours and fly out situations. All right. Uh, today, we are going to be focusing, the, the topic title, at least for today, is What's New for Developers? Um, and you may remember, if you have seen, let me just find that original uh, article. If you have seen the um, the meetup description for the session, this is specifically uh, using the What's New for Developers August 2023 uh, uh blog post on the developer blog the at developer.wordpress.org slash news. Justin Tadlock, who I'm sure many of you know, he used to write for WP Tavern. Uh, he's now a colleague at Automatic. He writes this What's New for Developers post every month. Um, and I thought it might be fun for us to, once this post is live, to sort of go through and, and pick through a few items and see how they work. So we're not going to be covering everything in this blog post today. Uh, we will cover some of the more specific items specifically related to theme or plugin developers because there's quite a lot to go through in that article, and I don't want to take up too long to go through it. Um, but before we get going, let's just get the announcements out of the way. So again, welcome, everybody, uh, and thank you to Tracy, who is co-hosting with me today. Um, please let me know if you can't see this announcement slide on your, on your screen now. You should be able to see that I shared the announcement slide. If you can't see the slide or if you can't see any anything that I'm presenting, please let me know and I will reinitialize the screen share. Um, we should be or are presenting in focus mode. Uh, yes, we are. Uh, and that is just a way we, we, we prevent any possible Zoom bombing that may or may not happen. Um, that means that I can see your video screens, Tracy can see your video screens, you can see ours, but you can't see each other. Um, and so, we we do that as I say just to just to protect everybody from any possible zoom bombers. Um, 
You are, as always, welcome to Ask Questions. This is very much not a typical Let's Code Thursday session. In fact, it's on Friday, first of all. Um, and I'm going to be writing some code, but it's not really usable code. It's more just example code. So you don't need to have a local environment if you don't want to for this one. If you want to play around with some of the things that I'm that I'm showing you, you're more than welcome to. Uh, but at any point in time, you're welcome to ask questions uh, and either post them in the chat or unmute your mic and ask questions that way. Uh, James, uh, you were asking about the uh, slides. I have shared the slides in the um, the meetup event. So let me just get that for you. Uh, here is the link, or it should be there. Did I, did I share it? Yes, I did. There we go. So let me copy uh, that link, and I'll paste it in the chat for you, and you can get it from there. Um, all right. And then just a few things. Uh, uh, maybe I should say if I'm going too slow today, or if I if I'm if I'm confusing today, please let me know. But if I do speak too fast or I'm rushing through things too quickly, please do let me know. Um, and I will, as always, be posting this to WordPress TV afterwards. I probably won't post it tomorrow because tomorrow is Saturday, so I'll probably get it up live uh, sometime during the course of the day on Monday. Um, and then for more educational content, you can find all our tutorials and courses at learn.wordpress.org. And all of the developer blog posts you can find at developer.wordpress.news, uh, sorry, .org forward slash news. All right. Um, are there any other questions about anything before we get going? I'm going to have my usual sip of coffee to remind myself to slow down, and then we can get into things. One interesting little side note, those of you who have joined my sessions, my Thursday sessions regularly, you will know that I sometimes complain about the Zoom controls that pop up over my screen. I discovered today for the first time after doing this for almost over a year that I can drag them off my main screen onto my side screen, my laptop monitor, meaning they don't get in my way. <laughs> so this is going to be a first for me. Uh, I'm not going to have things bothering me on screen like I normally do. Um, okay, let's get going. So as I was saying, uh, we're looking at the What's New for Developers blog. Before we do that, though, I wanted to share this little interesting thing. I was looking through, so I'm going to be using my PHP store instance today uh, for any code that I might write, just because I'm more comfortable in PHP, PHP Storm. And I remembered that WordPress ships with a readme.html file. Um, and I, I I just wanted to have a bit of a, a callback to that. So on any WordPress site, there should be this readme.html, unless you're on a hosting environment that takes it off. And you can browse to this readme.html at whatever the root URL is, and then just add readme.html. Um, and I thought it was just a cool little throwback to uh, where we used, you know, the ways we used to communicate with developers and users over the years. So I just wanted to share that little piece of information with you. All right, let's get on to why we're really here. <laughs> okay, so we're going to start by focusing. I want to focus on the things that are available in WordPress core. Um, if you read through this blog post, you will see that Justin mentions some things that are specific to WordPress 6.3. Um, and then he also talks about, I'm going to scroll down a little bit here. He talks about some things that have been added in the Gutenberg plugin specifically. Um, so I'm going to focus on the things that are available in WordPress core first, and then I'll, then I'll enable the Gutenberg plugin and go through some of the things that are currently available in the Gutenberg plugin, but will eventually be coming to core. Because I think it's a good way to kind of look, to, look ahead and see what improvements are coming along. So at the moment, this is my current WordPress site. I've switched to one of the style variations of the 2023 three theme. I hope that this is clear and legible and everybody can read this. If, we, if, it, if, if, it, if you can't, let me know and I'll change the style. Um, and in my local environment, I have uh, the Gutenberg plugin installed, but not active. Uh, I'm actually going to just deactivate that. That's from a previous workshop. Um, and then, so I do have Gutenberg installed, but not active. And then for, for my theme, as I mentioned, I currently have 2023 enabled, but I'm using one of the styles that ships with 2023. Um, all right. So the first thing that I want to mention is NQ block editor assets versus NQ block assets. So this one is very specific to mostly plugin developers. If you're developing, um, block plugins, in other words, plugins that contain blocks, there was an update to, let me just find what I'm looking for. It's right down the bottom here somewhere. Is it? No. Uh, I thought I had, there we go. Um, in WordPress 6.3, the post editor content is in an iframe. So 
I didn't know this until I did read, read through this post, but let's go into the dashboard of my site here and let's edit the site. And what they're talking about is this area here in the, in the template editor, for example. This is actually sitting in an iframe now. Uh, if I inspect this in my, you'll see it actually says they reload frame because it picks up this as an iframe. And if you inspect it, you can see in the in the DevTools inspector, if I scroll, there it is. There's the iframe there and there. Um, and it, I think it is useful and interesting to understand why this is done and also what it means if you're using certain hooks. Um, so something that um, I recommend looking out for is there usually is on the make core blog, there usually is a miscellaneous editor changes in WordPress, whatever version that gets posted uh, before the new release. And this was the one for 6.3. So this is another one that I recommend going and reading after the session. But the first one they talk about is the fact that the post editor is iframed. Um, and there is a article here, which I also recommend reading that explains why this was done. And essentially this is to allow the uh, styles that are applied um, to the admin interface don't affect the editor content. Uh, they don't have to do things like uh, fake media queries. Basically it improves the user experience of working with the editor. Um, and so the point that was brought up with this change was that originally um, folks were using this hook, NQ block assets. So let me show you that one. So we'll get that one first. Uh, so I'm just gonna search for NQ block assets. And then I'm also gonna search for NQ block editor assets. Um, so let's find that one. There's block assets and then block editor assets. There it is over there. And you'll see in the article, Justin says, um, if you're using uh, the NQ block editor assets hooks to NQ a script or style that specifically targets the content canvas, um, that's sort of the exception. So the point that is made there is that if you are using, um, let me just find it here. There was in the miscellaneous site, here it is. Um, it's also worth noting that NQ block editor assets should not be used to add style sheets for the editor content. Please use NQ block assets for that. Um, now, if you have developed plugins before and you're using something like the create block uh, uh, package to scaffold your, your block plugin, uh, then you should be fine. But if you have used this NQ block assets hook before, to apply styles specifically to the editor content, you should update it to use NQ block assets. Um, so let me share those two with you in the chat. Um, so if you were using NQ block edit assets, that's the one that you may have been using in the past. Uh, it is now recommended to use, let me just check myself here, NQ block assets, that's the one over there. Um, so that I thought is worth knowing. Um, I haven't developed blocks in a while, but uh, I do remember that when I was developing blocks, I had used create block theme. And so I didn't have to go make any changes to blocks that I'd worked on. Uh, but that's more of a sort of a you know, deprecation, if you will, type of update. So that was the first one that I thought was, was interesting. The next one, which uh, I'm actually surprised hasn't come to WordPress yet, but is now available in WordPress, is the fact that it now has something called development mode. Um, and development mode currently only does one or two small things. Uh, but basically, you can configure this new constant in your WP config or wherever you're, you're configuring constants. Um, and you can then specify that this is a development site. And the possible options you have is maybe you're working on a core. So you're working on WordPress core, and you want to switch to that that's, uh, version. You're developing for a plugin, developing for a theme. Uh, you want all three or you don't want any development mode set. Um, now, what interests, what interests me about this is that currently, the main usage for development mode relates to theme JSON in a block uh, uh, theme. And it says here on most sites, certain caching data from th certain data from theme JSON, sorry, caching certain data from theme JSON is reliable since that data would only be invalidated when the theme is updated. However, if you're actively developing a theme on the site and modifying theme JSON constantly, having to manually invalidate the cache all the time would be detrimental. So this is very similar to 
the uh, script debug constant. Uh, if you don't know about that one, that is a constant that allows you to, let me find it here quickly, allows you to sort of switch all of the WordPress scripts um, that are minified um, to their original unminified version. Um, let me just get this open here quickly. Uh, I think it's under WPS. Yeah, that one, I think. It's under, yeah, it's under debugging in WordPress. Um, sorry, my internet seems very, oh, now <laughs> it's redirected me to the wrong place. Here we go. Um, so it's this constant script debug, and it forces WordPress to use the dev versions of core JavaScript and CSS files. So essentially right now, um, the, the development mode, uh, if you're setting it to a theme, will then, will then not cache the theme JSON. So you can make changes to your theme, just hit refresh on the page. Those of you who may have attended some of my block theme development uh, workshops, I always use that hard refresh option. This should prevent me from having to do that. Um, and so basically it's just a case of going into your WP config or wherever else you define your constants. Uh, it's usually towards the bottom of that file. There's WP debug. Um, and so you can just take this WP development mode and you can turn it on by saying something like define, actually not something like, exactly like define WP debug mode. And then for example, you could say theme. Uh, now, now WordPress will know that we're developing a theme and not cache any of those theme JSON changes. So I thought that's a cool uh, developer focused feature. I like the fact that now that it exists, we can start adding developer specific things for core development, for plugin development, for theme development. Um, so it might be useful for, you know, those of you who might remember doing things like enqueuing your JavaScript and then having to pass in a timestamp as the version number so that the cache was bust every time you refreshed your page or those kind of things. Um, so I like the fact that this exists and that it can be used. I do recommend reading through this, this article in more detail, um, but it gives you all kinds of useful information. And I, I'm quite excited about this change personally. I know it's a small change. It doesn't do that much, but it, it's, it's quite exciting. Um, all right. The next one, if we go back to, I'm going to close some of these uh, windows down because I, otherwise I get myself lost. Um, if we go back to the what's new for developers and if we scroll, uh, which one was it I wanted to do? Oh yes, the global styles revisions. Um, I just want to find where that is, I think. Yeah, I think there is a, um, no, was it, it was REST API updates. There we go. Okay. The REST API has a new endpoint for global style revisions, uh, which is a feature that shipped with version 6.3, and you can get to it by using this endpoint. Now, when I read this, I didn't quite know what it meant. Um, and that's one of the reasons why my, my current theme is using one of the styles, because I figured, well, it's got something to do with styles. So I went in and I changed my style and I didn't see anything. And then I saw this little last modified a day ago button, button at the bottom here. Um, and I noticed that if you click on that, uh, it takes you here and it shows that there are revisions to the style. So effectively what I did was I changed some text or something like that. I basically went into the styles interface for this theme. Um, and I went into, for example, let's say colors. Um, and I changed maybe the background to a maybe a different color there. And hopefully that's still viewable to everybody. And then I saved that change and I made a few, a few changes like that. Um, and I noticed that when I do that, then you have these revisions in your revision history. So this is obviously something that's been added to the editor, the fact that you can have style revisions. Um, I think that's quite cool. I, I, I personally haven't used it myself yet, but I think it's quite a cool feature. Um, and so what this endpoint does is it actually allows you to query those style revisions via the REST API. Now, the first thing that I did when I was when I was fiddling this was, okay, fine, but how do I know what revision I'm working with here? Um, and they don't show you the ID. So the endpoint requires the revision ID. Um, and for those who don't know, the style revisions, I'm going to pop on over to my PHP, my admin install here quickly and just log in. Um, just like the templates and template parts are stored in the post table as a custom post type, so are the style revisions. So if I jump right to the end, there they are. Um, so here are the last four custom styles 
uh, stored in the post table. You'll see there is the current one. And then there is revision one, uh, revision, version one, version one, version one. So these are the four revisions that are being displayed uh, or the four versions of the style, uh, I should say, that are being displayed when this list comes up. So the endpoint uh, needs to have, first of all, the ID. So in this case, it's ID 16. So I check that by which is the, the current uh, one with a proper post name. So that's the one that WordPress is, is, is using. You can see it's also published, it's not inherited. And that is ID 16. And so I took that URL, this one that I'm showing you here, I'm gonna copy this out now. Um, I opened up my, my LearnPress site to access the REST API. And then I pasted the WPJSON da -da 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 URL. Um, and then I changed the ID to ID 16. And no, not that, sorry. Don't know why I did that. Ah, that I know why I did because for some reason it removed the slash. So let's do that again. There we go. And then I saw, oh, you're not allowed to review this religion for the revision for the global star. Um, so basically that's an authentication thing. So you need to be an authenticated user, which makes sense because you don't want somebody externally to be able to use the REST API and just see what you're doing with your theme. Um, so what I then did was I popped on over to my users. Um, and if you don't know this, uh, by default, WordPress supports a functionality where for each user, you can add application passwords. Um, and I use this specifically for when I want to create REST API application access for testing or development. So I created this REST API application password. I opened up Postman, which is my API uh, testing tool. Uh, and if you want to see that in action, you can go to learn WordPress. And there are some tutorials about the REST API that I, that I created a while ago that show you how to use Postman. And here is the URL that I'm requesting. So learnpress.test and then wpjson wpv2 global styles, ID 16, I want to get the revisions. And then under authorization, I just selected basic auth, put in my username and my application password. Um, this is only an application password for my local WordPress install, so nobody would be able to use this externally uh, to hack any of my content. Um, and then when I, sorry, I see Postman's not on screen properly. When I sent that request, then I got some results. Um, and you'll see here, here are all the, the, the style changes and things. Um, so that's interesting. I thought that was an interesting change that has been made. Um, probably, not something that I would use every day uh, unless I was developing some way to query the styles and show them somewhere else in the site. But I'm pretty sure that uh, the block editor or the site editor is probably using that REST API endpoint. Um, and I always find these things interesting to, to know about. Sorry, I'm just turning my phone off so it doesn't beep at us again. I always find these things interesting to know about um, in case it might become useful one day. So that was an interesting uh, change. And then the last one that was interesting to me was this WP get remote theme patterns. Now, I actually chatted to Justin about this just before this workshop. So I want to see if that conversation has borne fruit and bear with me while I am a bit cryptic. Um, it has, excellent. So the original version of this article referred to the WP get remote theme patterns function, um, but that's been renamed since this article was written. So Justin wrote, Justin tends to write these articles well before 6.3 is released. Um, and when 6.3 was released, that function was changed. And so basically what that function does is if you are defining um, patterns in your, um, in your theme.json, you can query those patterns. So let me show you what I mean by that. Um, in my themes JSON, Go here to 2023. I'm going to go to my theme JSON folder. And what I'm going to just do as well is I'm going to minify all of these top level items or just collapse them so we can easily see what's going on. Um, so at the top level, we have schema, version, custom templates, setting styles, and template parts. What we don't have is registering of the patterns. Now we do have the patterns here in the um in the directory, the patterns directory. But what you can also do is you can register those patterns in your theme JSON. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's something like, uh, I can't remember what it is now. So let me go and check on the schema. Um, <clears throat> so patterns, there it is an array of pattern slugs to be registered from the pattern directory. Uh, it's an array items and then type. Um, so it would be something like, let's have a look here. So patterns. Wondering if it needs to be. 
let's go back one step. I haven't coded patterns in a while, so bear with me here. Um, no, it's not picking something up there. Um, trying to think, maybe 2022 has patterns registered. Let's have a look. Uh, no, just template parts. Uh, 2021, maybe. No, no patterns there. Um, I haven't registered patterns in such a long time. So it's patterns, and then it's probably, let me just go back to the schema. It's type of an array of items. So it's just strings. Okay, so it's just a list of strings. So then we could say, for example, the first pattern is call to action, um, and the second pattern is footer default. Um, let's, uh, this is giving me an error for some reason, probably because expected, hmm, clearly coding this wrong. Um, let's go and let's go and do some digging into how patterns work in theme.json. Uh, so, <clears throat> Outspacing. Let's block patterns. Um, mm -hmm. Wonder if it's actually actually not sure myself. Um, Very quickly scrolling through here. Oh, they didn't actually talk about it here. Anyway, um, at the moment, because I don't have any patterns enabled, it's probably not going to return any, any information. Uh, so I'm just going to do that for now. Um, and then if you call that, that function that was mentioned, where is that? Um, W theme directory pattern slugs, then it will return that array of slugs um, to your to your to your request. Um, there we go. There's an example. Patterns, partner logos. There's an example. I knew I had one somewhere, just couldn't remember. So let's do this. So patterns, partner logos. Um, so let's change that to call to action. Da, 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 da. Call to action. And still giving me an error. Oh, because I haven't done the next one, that's why. Uh, footer default, for example. There we go. So there my patterns are set up. So that's the array of patterns in the list. Interesting to note, you don't need to specify these patterns if you're adding them to a block theme. Um, so I'm not quite sure what the usage of this is. I, can, I, I should probably should go and dig and find out why you might want to register them there. Uh, but the long and the short of it is if I now go into my WordPress site, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to... Um, switch to the site and run WP shell, which is a WP CLI command that allows me to just run any kind of arbitrary code on my PHP instance. So there we are there. And then I'm just gonna do something like patterns and I'm going to call that function. Um, let's find it here quickly. Uh, da, 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 da. WP get theme directory pattern slugs. Uh, there we go. And let's call that. And you'll see it returns the call to action and the footer default. Um, Justin does mention that you can, so I think it's got to do with when you uh, import patterns from the pattern directory, uh, which I've never done. So that's probably why that function would be useful. Um, but uh, yeah, that was another developer focusing. So if you work with patterns, it might be useful for you to, to know about that one. All right, that one took a bit longer than I planned um, because I thought it would be easier to get some patterns returned. But those are the specifically the WordPress 6.3 core changes that have come through that I thought were interesting. There are a few more in, in the post, um, but now what I'd like to do is first take a quick break, check if there are any questions, and then switch over to anything specific that I thought was interesting on the Gutenberg plugin. Uh, and there were these four items that I thought were quite interesting, so we'll run through them.
Okay. So the first one uh, is the one, again, I'm going to close down some, some tabs. There we go. The first one that I thought was interesting was the extendable media inserter. So to understand what that was doing, I had to go and dive into my editor. Um, so I'm going to close this down and I'm going to open up my list view. No, not my list view, sorry, my my insert, my block inserter button. Um, and I don't know if you see it on your screen. I'm going to go back a step and hopefully you will see it as well. So let's go back to editor um, and let's go to, let's say one of the templates. Um, Actually, let's just click on there. That'll take us straight into editing. Perfect. And if we, now, when I click plus, what happen, watch what happens when the block inserter comes up. Patterns, blocks, and then media pops in there. So media is obviously something that's been added newly to WordPress, probably in 6.3, maybe in 6.2. When you click on that, it gives you the option to add images from OpenVerse. Now, if you don't know, OpenVerse, uh, let's actually go there, um, is uh, not that one, this one is a project that uh, the WordPress uh, foundation, I think it was, um, sort of started merging and creating recently. It's a search engine for openly licensed media. Um, and it was built off of something else that I think the sort of WordPress community took over. Um, but what you can do is you can, from your, um, from your editor, you can search OpenVerse for content. So in this case, let's search for a computer um, and it'll go and, and we'll go and search for images that have to do with the computer. Uh, and what's nice about this is OpenVerse is media is openly live. So it's open source just as WordPress is open source. So you are, you are allowed to use any of these images in your content, which I think is great. Um, I've used things like pixels and uh, Pixabay or something or others, you know, these sort of free um, ways to add images. But I think this is really, really cool that you can do this. You can just add the image straight from here. Um, and so what, what this update does, uh, this extendable media inserter, is it allows plugin developers to add their own uh, media inserter options, which I thought was really, really cool. Um, now, I didn't have time to code up a full example because I'd have to go and do some research on REST APIs and all that kind of thing. But fortunately for us, uh, the, the dev note that, um, or at least the issue that opened up um, this example that where it was merged, they include some example code. Uh, and this is essentially, if you have a look at it, I'm gonna copy it out and I'm gonna pop it into my, into my editor so we can see it a bit better. Um, and then we're going to use it. Uh, oh, I've actually got it here already. <laughs> uh, let me let me paste it again. Um, so what this is essentially doing is it's it's basically this is the OpenVerse imp implementation. So this is what's being used when the editor loads to implement the OpenVerse um, media category to be able to insert things from OpenVerse. And you'll see it does a few things. Uh, it creates a query to the OpenVerse API and then returns the responses for that search that I just did. Um, so uh, Cynthia mentioned 6.2 as OpenVerse 2. That is correct. Uh, well, at least as far as I know, it has been around for a while. I don't think it's just been recently added to WordPress 6.3. So it has been around for a while. Um, but now what plugin developers can do is they can take this code and they can extend it for themselves. So let's say I have my own OpenVerse type setup or I have my own resource for registering media that folks want to use, I can use this code. And that's where I just had the new media option that I showed you earlier. So I'm just going to call it new media here uh, and search new media. And then obviously the fetching of the data would be some other API, but I'm going to leave it as open verse right now. And I can use this code in a plugin. Um, what I am going to do for testing purposes now is I'm going to use this code in the um, in the developer tools and actually see it happen live on the screen. So if you have, if you want to do this along with me, you're more than welcome to, but if you go to your editor um, and if you open up the media, the, the block insert a button to open up this list or anywhere where you're inserting blocks that has this media tab, and then you open up your, uh, your dev tools, you can go to the console and you can then paste this code. And I'm going to share the original snippet, the, the ticky that the, the tick you, the ticket that has the snippet in case you want to play with this. Um, and then using the new media option that I added there, 
I can now run this code. And if we watch on the, you might not see it now. So let's open up media. Um, if I run this code, uh, read, okay. Okay, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Let's go back one step. This is available with a Gutenberg plugin activated. <laughs> so I should have done that first. So thank you, Painkillers, for not reminding me that I needed to do that. So let's go enable Gutenberg. Uh, it's currently 6.4, so there it's enabled. Let's go back. We'll leave that code there in the browser. We'll refresh this. I'll probably have to paste that code again. Uh, so it takes a little bit longer to load now because there's more stuff happening with Gutenberg. But if we open that up um, and pop open the media category and then, no, not that code. Uh, I've already copied something else out. So let's grab this and pop it back here. And let's run that. And you'll see there's the new media category. Um, so obviously when I do a search on it now, it's going to search Openverse because I've left the API stuff in place. But that's a cool thing for me that you can do that under media. So if you're somebody who has, you want to give your client access to a specific media library that they're paying for within their environment, um, you can code up something that'll allow them to do that. Uh, or if you host your own media library, you know, audio, video, whatever the case may be, you can use that code to implement that in the block editor. So that was really, I thought, a really cool little find um, and an interesting uh, bit of extensibility. It also shows us how to extend uh, things using specific, so here, this register insert media category is specifically used to extend the block editor like this. Um, so, and this is because obviously it's JavaScript, so it has to run when the JavaScript loads. So that one I thought was interesting and fun uh, to look at. The other one was vertical text orientation su support. Um, so this is one, let's find that one here. It's right below here. This is one where basically you can enable vertical text on screen and the text will appear vertically like this. Uh, you do it in your theme.json. You just need to set the settings topography writing mode setting to true. Uh, and then the changes will take place. So let's <clears throat> go and do that now. Let me close this down. Let's go back and find um, a page that has some, uh, no, let's find a template that has some text content on it. Maybe index. No, index is not a great option. Let's try page. Uh, single post, probably a good one. Yeah, there we go. Single post has got some content. If I now, and here's where I could be clever, or at least I should be clever, is I should enable theme development mode, which I've done. Um, and that means that any changes I make to theme JSON shouldn't be uh, cached, which is great. <laughs> um, so if I go into my theme JSON and I look for, which one was it? Um, settings, typography, writing mode. Okay, let's go and find that. So there, let's get rid of the patterns. We don't need the patterns anymore. Um, so let's go to settings and let's find topography. There it is. And there's writing mode. I've already set it to true. Uh, so it's already enabled on the site. So that's fine. And now if we go back and we go and edit something that has text, I think this will just work here. So let's try it. Um, <clears throat> So that is post content. No, it needs to be a paragraph. So let's add a paragraph. Uh, so let's add insert after, and let's pop in some text here. And if you have a look at the typography options for this paragraph, you will see that there is an option to add text orientation settings to your sidebar. Uh, and when I do that, there are the text orientation settings. And if I now change this, we should see that text go sideways. Woohoo, <laughs> there it is. Uh, so if you need to orient, orient, orient your text in a different way, these, these changes are coming. My guess would be at some point you'll be able to actually apply maybe a, um, a percentage value or a numerical value to this orientation. So it'll actually do it at you know, whatever angle you want. So I thought that was quite interesting that this is coming. Um, I can't think of any use cases for it for myself right now, but I think it's a fun one to, to play with and use. Uh, let's actually center align this so that we can actually see it happening a bit better on screen. There we go. Oh, it actually goes all the way over. Maybe we need to center align it again. Ooh, it looks like we may have found a bug. I wonder if that's supposed to happen. If you center align it, should it move? Maybe not because it's inside of a paragraph. That's interesting. We probably need to put it inside a group and then center it in the group or center the group. That would make more sense. Uh, anyway, so that's a new feature that's been added uh, to, to WordPress. Uh, in the Gutenberg plugin specifically, coming soon to a WordPress near you. <laughs> okay, um, the next one that I thought was interesting was there's a new progress bar component. Um, I haven't, I don't have an example of this, uh, but basically it says Gutenberg 6.4 has a new progress bar component that lets you show progress to a user in a variety of scenarios. 
Um, I think in the ticket, they actually have some examples that they show. Um, yeah, here's a screen recording. Uh, so it shows, let's actually play this one quickly. You see it's loading this kind of progress bar. Um, and I guess there's various things you can do with it. Sort of your, you know, your loading type screen you can do with it. So that's an interesting component that's been added. I thought that was that was very interesting. And then finally, the big one that I thought that I'm really looking forward to um, is, so if you don't know, there is a proposal or there's a project underway to add something called the Interactivity API. Now, the Interactivity API is a way to allow um, developers a better experience when they're building interactive blocks. Um, and I don't want to get too much into the details of this. But if you have a look at this demo, um, you can see you can see what it does. So I'm going to make this large, and hopefully, I don't think it's going to actually uh, play the audio for you. Uh, actually, no, I think I can share my. There is a way to share my audio. Um, somebody told me this a while ago, and if anybody can remember, please let me know. But there is a way to share my audio. When you uh, select the uh, screen to be shared, there are two checkboxes in the bottom left. Yes, I just found it now. Share computer sound. I've just found it. There we go. So hopefully you'll, you'll hear this. Uh, let me, let me, my volume is quite high. So I'm going to put it about halfway. And this is, this is what the interactivity API allows. Let's take a look at some of the experiences that you can create easily thanks to the interactivity API. You All right. can navigate to the next page of the movie results without doing a full page reload. Each movie has a like button that synchronizes with this other block over here in the header so that whenever you like a movie, the number of likes is updated automatically in both places. When you navigate to the individual movie page, you see that the likes are still preserved. You can even play the movie trailer and the trailer will keep playing as you navigate around the site. Okay, so so that's kind of some of the stuff that's coming um, <clears throat> to WordPress. I, I like what it enables. I like the fact that it enables you to build these more interactive front ends uh, using blocks. Um, I do recommend, I don't want to play the whole video now because I, I want everybody to sort of go and read the article themselves. There is a live site that you can demo um which is basically the site that that chap spoke about and, and this so this is all built on top of wordpress uh using the the yeah, interactivity api and so the reason this is this is interesting is because <clears throat> uh where is it now uh, let me just find it here we go um this is something that is sort of slowly coming to wordpress um <clears throat> You will see that currently they've they've added 6.3, 16.3 has added runtime support for a style core directive. Uh, there's a new Gutenberg block should use the interactivity API filter hook. And then the create block plugin has added a template, which allows you to scaffold a block very quickly using custom interactive blocks. So I would like to encourage you, I'm not going to do it now because it takes a while to get that all up and running and going. I would like to encourage you to consider. Uh, using create block to scaffold yourself a new block using the interactivity template. Uh, the way it works is you, let me share two things with you. So the first thing you need is just to have your, your local site set up for using it. Um, I did a tutorial. Yes, I'm re referring to my own material here. I did a tutorial on the create block um, package. Let me just find it quickly. No, that's not where I want to be. Sorry, folks. One sec. Um, I want to be searching in Learn WordPress. There we go. Create block. Um, <clears throat> there we go. Create block theme. So there's two tutorials you can, or create block tool, sorry, not create block theme. Um, there's two things with a similar name. So create block. the create block tool is this tool you can run from your command line, and it'll scaffold a new block for you. And now that there is this um, interactive template, when you're scaffolding your block, you can pass it this template, dash dash template, create a block interactive template. And the plugin that it will scaffold for you will use an interactive block. Now you might remember when we were looking at, um, 
uh, let me go back to my plugins. There was that uh, plugin that I deactivated. That was a plugin that I very quickly spun up uh, to use the interactive block with interactivity API. So let's activate that. I, I have no idea what this is going to do. Um, I literally just spun it up and, and let it do its thing. Um, I may need to actually run something to get it to work. So let me just go and find that plugin. Uh, WP Learn. Uh, where are we now? We're on LearnPress. Just make sure it's the right one. Yeah, it's called Learn to Do. Interactive block. Uh, it looks like the build has been built, so we should be able to use it. Um, so let's see what this does when we go and add this to a post or a page. Uh, let's go to Hello World. <clears throat> and I don't know what to expect. Um, so let me see what the plugin might be called. Uh, it's in the package JSON. Here we go. WP, it'll be uh, WP Learn to Do. Um, there it is. So let's add that. Um, I don't know what it's done, actually. I don't know if it has done anything. Um, that's the same. Let me just check in the save. Uh, it's the edit. There's the render. Okay, I don't think it actually does anything. It doesn't create anything for us that we can actually see. Um, I might need to do some reading. Um, but anyway, this will this will scaffold it with the with the template being used. I haven't dived into it yet, so I'm not sure what I what I, what it would do. Um, James says, "Is this basically making child theme pieces?" Uh, that's the challenge I'm facing. I'd like to know how to spin off a child theme from one of the standard WP themes or any other theme for that matter. Um, I would say no. I don't think child themes are are. I don't think it's making pieces of child themes. Um, if you if you want to know, so if you were looking for tools around child theming, there's two things you can use. Uh, create block theme will allow you to create a child theme of your of your parent theme. Uh, but I think that's only if it's a block theme. Um, I There are a couple of plugins in the theme repository, in the plugin repository for creating child themes. Um, but if you're working with, with, um, with block themes, you can use create a block theme to you generate child themes. Um, so I hope that answers your question. This is more for, this interactivity API is more for allowing you to build things that can interact with the database, saving and storing data without having to refresh the page. Uh, so without having to essentially create custom REST API endpoints to query data, AJAX endpoints to query data, this API, there's basically there's ways that you can call things, call data, call metadata, all those things, um, and just have it come back to you on the front end and be able to use it. Um, so it's still something that's being developed. It's still not something that's 100% stable yet. Um, but I do suggest checking it out if, if this kind of thing is interesting to you um, and maybe checking out the template on create block theme. All right. That's all that I have um, planned for today. So I hope some, at least one of those new features was interesting to you. Um, if you have any questions around this or anything else, my two recommendations would be number one, do reach out to Justin, uh, the author. I've lost that post now. Um, where's it gone? <laughs> oh dear, I'm going to have to go find it again. Uh, what's new for developers? Do reach out to Justin if you have any questions around the content of this of this post. There's a whole bunch of interesting things in here. And also keep an eye on this developer blog because every month, usually around the 10th of that month, Justin will publish a what's new for developers for that month. Um, and I find it personally to be a better way to keep up to date with the changes that are happening in WordPress core than to try and follow all the dev notes and all the updates and all that kind of thing. Um, so, so I recommend... Some and this is now me plugging the work of some of my colleagues who work on the blog. Uh, but I do recommend uh, subscribing to the WordPress developer blog and keeping up to date on all of the news there. Great. Well, that is my bit for this Friday. I hope I didn't fumble it up too badly with my, my mixed words there. Um, thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, next week, Thursday, we'll be going back to some common APIs again. Um, and then there's also on Wednesday, there is part two of the Contributing to Learn WordPress Code workshop if you want to join that. Um, so, so keep an eye out on learn.wordpress.org learn and meetup.com for the updates around that. 
Otherwise, thank you all for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful Friday and enjoy the rest of your week and your weekend. Bye-bye.